quick mentor disclaimer here. Please do not watch this video if you're under the age of 18 or in an area where something being done in this video is considered to be illegal. This is an area where marijuana recreationally and medically is 100% legal, and I'm over the age of 18. Hello, guys. My name is Aubrey. This is my very first grow, and I'm hoping you guys will follow along with me here. And uh, hopefully, some of you more experienced growers will help me out if I'm doing anything wrong here. And then, hopefully, some of you beginners who don't really know what you're doing, um, almost pretty close to the same boat that I am in here, um, will learn something, maybe learn a few things here. Maybe we can, we can learn together because I definitely don't really know what I'm doing here a whole lot, um, considering this is my first grow. I think for this first video here, which I'm hoping it's going to be a video series if everything does go correct and, and how I'm hoping it does. Um, this first video, I'm going to start out by going over all the kink components here in my setup. So number one, we're looking at my Gorilla Light Line Tent. Um, this is uh, pretty close to the top of the line tent. It's not huge. Um, it's not the, the very best out there, but it's going to work very well for what I, I plan on doing, I'm hoping. Um, it is a two by two and a half foot tent. So that's going to be pretty decent for right around two plants, I believe. I think three plants might be pushing it just a little, but I do think two plants is going to do just fine. You should be able to find this on Amazon pretty easily. I think they're, they're sold out fairly often, um, or maybe just at your, your local grow shop. I would definitely throw into Google for sure, local grow shop. Um, just, just something around those lines, or maybe ask around to some friends to, to kind of see what you guys have in the area. But I definitely would recommend this. The Gorilla Lightline 2 by 2 and a half foot tent. Next up here is going to be my light. Definitely still uh, one of the most key components here in a, in a good tent. Um, this light is an HLG 100 V2. Um, I do believe that stands for Horticulture Lighting Group. Um, 100 watt and I want to say it's version 2 but I, I can't confirm that. I do believe it is version 2. I have no idea what the, the version 1 is like. Um, but so far, I have been very happy with it. It is extremely, extremely bright. Um, and I do believe that this is going to be more than enough for uh, two plants. Um, this light here is rated to be able to handle up to two by two foot in flower, which this is a, a two by two and a half foot tent. So I don't think we're going to have any issue there. And it is rated to be able to withstand up to three by three and a half in the state of veg. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it on and off for you here. Here we go. All right, next up here is my Cloudline T4 inline duct fan. I am very happy with this fan. I mean, this is my first grow, so obviously I haven't had a, a whole lot to compare it to. Um, from my point of view here, it just does its job very well and it does it very quietly. Um, again, you can pick this up your your local grow shop. Um, we're on Amazon, just about everything else in this video is the same as well. So this fan here is what it looks like on the inside. Um, right here is the, the port here to hook up a carbon filter to it. This isn't really too necessary in your veg stage, which is before your, your flowers start to actually bloom and it starts to smell. Um, you still do want some air moving in and out of there, so I do got it hooked up anyways. I do have a carbon filter, but a carbon filter does not last for a lifetime. It is something you have to replace after a long time of use, so I don't see any need to put it on before I need it, so I'm gonna leave that off for a bit. Let's see what it looks like from the outside here. Very professional job. I did zip tie it so that way it uh, stays tight on there. I do believe it came with some metal brackets. I do need to get around to actually hook that up the right way. Um, but no safety issue there. Definitely not going to cut your hand off or anything. Pretty quiet. I think it might be a little bit louder here in the mic if the wind's blowing on it, but in all reality, it is not very loud. Okay, next up here, um, I'm going to try and get out of the way of this fan here. I think that might sound kind of louder the microphone there. So next up here, we have a combo unit. Um, it doubles as a humidity monitor as well as a temperature monitor, um, and also a humidity controller and a temperature controller as well. This is um, definitely one of, the, one of my favorite things in my setup here. Um, surprisingly enough, I didn't have to pay a whole lot of money for this. This actually came with my Cloudline fan, which is awesome. So you have an auto mode here. Um, you have your, your setting down here, and then you also have, so this is basically your setting right here. So you're gonna set the, the temperature um, to the, the highest temp you possibly want it to get to. Um, and then down here, if you click this button again, um, it will go to the low temp. I have my, my low temp set at 70 degrees, so that means it's gonna stay somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees. You have your high humidity, 75%, low humidity, 65%. And then you also have your current temperature, 71 degrees, 
and your current humidity level 43%. Mine is running a, a little low right now. Um, I did just take my humidifier out for a bit and put it back in. You also have an alarm setting for when you want your alarm to go off. If it goes past any of these values here, exceeds any of those values, it'll you'll hear a, a very annoying beeping, if I'm being honest. I absolutely hate the, the sound of the alarm. Um, but you will definitely know nonetheless what's going on, and that's, that's very good to not let your, your plants die due to some high temperature, low temperature, high humidity, or low humidity. So how this reads here um, is it does have a line going into that hole at the very bottom of the, the tent there. Very nice of a uh, Gorilla Light line to, to put that there. They know you're going to be running a lot of cords. Um, it does come from right there at the bottom goes up and around here you do see it come right over here so there it is right there try to not put it too close to the heater over there also try to not put it too close to the humidifier and also not too close to the light which can also put out a little bit of heat um, yep there it is that's where it uh, senses all of its, its readings and then sent right back over here another thing that is very awesome about that unit is right here. Um, there's another line. Goes down under there, comes back around. It then plugs into this unit right here. And that is actually how it controls it. Um, if say if if the humidity level is getting too high in there, it's gonna kick the kick the fan up a bit. Um, the fan is on seven right now. It does have a, a lot higher settings there. So it'll kick the fan up a bit, get some of the humidity out of there. Um, if the humidity is a little low, it'll lower the fan settings and get a little bit more humidity to, to build up in there. Um, same with the temperature. I'm not really sure if turning the fan on will bring the temperature down or up. I, I'm pretty sure. I think it's pretty obvious it would actually, actually bring it down. But that's, that's how that works, and I'm very happy with this. And I would recommend it to anybody who's looking for something like this. Next up here is my little heater. Um, it's, it's fairly difficult, if I'm going to be honest, to find a heater that this, is this small. Um, it also can easily be, be tied up somewhere in the tent. And uh, another big one here, not only the small form factor that's fairly difficult to find, um, is the temperature control or the, the thermostat. Um, it's pretty difficult to find actually in a smaller little heater. Um, but it, it does its job pretty well. I do find that the tent doesn't necessarily get up to 75. When it's set at 75, it's typically going to sit right around 72 or 73. But I, I still am um, nonetheless very happy with this heater. Um, I, I did get a, a very professional zip tie and tape job done, so definitely no chance of that falling there. Next up here is my humidifier. Um, again, this is just another cheap product, just like my heater. I just picked this up from Walmart a long time ago when my nose was stuffed up. It absolutely did not help with my nose being stuffed up whatsoever. Um, if anything, I, I just didn't like the way the room felt a little bit wet. Um, but that's not going to be the same case for your plants. Your plants are going to love a, a humid environment, um, especially they'll strive a lot more um, in a hu humid environment once they're, they're younger. So that's what we got here is just this cheap little humidifier. Um, at first, I thought I was actually going to find a, have to find a humidifier um, with some kind of RH control on it, relative humidity control. Um, but it turns out that that's actually what the humidity controller is for that I showed you guys earlier, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it is very big and ugly, but it does hold a good amount of water. That's something I would definitely look out for. There is a lot of nicer looking humidifiers than this. They look a lot classier, a lot sleeker, um, but a lot of times that does mean a smaller form factor, and you are going to have to be replacing the water quite a bit more. Um, this, this one, on, it's on the back. You can't see it now, but it does have just two simple controls, um, one raindrop and three raindrops. I have no idea if the one raindrop is more or less because the one raindrop is bigger than the other three little raindrops. I'm thinking it's less, um, but I just have it in the low setting here so that way the fan doesn't have to constantly kick on and remove a lot of the humidity out of there. So there's my humidifier. Next up here we have my little fan. Yep, that's my little fan. I don't, I don't really know um, what all to say about this. It's just got a simple clip on it that I clipped onto the tit to uh, hold it in the same spot there. Um, it's just very small. I assume it doesn't use very much electricity, um, but you will want some air moving around in the tent. You will want your, your branches to, to move just a, a little bit. Um, definitely that, that helps a lot when it comes to building strength within the, the branches. If your branches are just going to be sitting there, um, not moving at all, they're not going to build up any, any strength and they're going to be very fragile. So I definitely recommend having some um, form of, of air movement in the bottom to the top because you definitely don't want it to be just in the top. 
Next up here is my autopilot surge protector. I am very happy with the way that this thing performs. Um, it hasn't let me down yet, um, which I mean, this is my first scroll and you don't see any plants in there, so that means it hasn't went through a lot of use, obviously. Um, but I would always recommend once you have your tent all set up, you, you go through a few dry runs um, overnight to just kind of see if there's going to be too much humidity in there, too little, um, too high of temperature, too low of temperature. You definitely don't want to be blindsided when you have your actual plants in there and wait for the time that your, your plants are actually in there to troubleshoot. I would highly recommend against that. So this thing has been working a bit. So right here, um, we have the just regular power switch. Um, right here, this is actually very nice. Those little blue things on the side there, you can't really tell by looking at it. Um, not just through the camera, but it actually took me a very long time as well to figure out how this thing works. So what you'll do is that arrow right there, you will set the current time of day on that arrow. Next, when the blue lines are flipped up, that means the lights are going to be off. When the blue lines are pushed down, that means the, the lights are going to be on, or power is going to be on, or power is going to be off, not necessarily just the light. Typically what this is going to be used for, when you very first get your plant, um, you're going to want to have lights on for 18 to 24 hours a day. Um, that's in the vegetative state. As soon as you're getting ready to bloom um, flowers, you're going to be 12 on and 12 off. You're going to have at least 12 hours of darkness. So that's why half of that's black and then half of that's light. 12 hours light, 12 hours dark. So typically the way you're going to set that um, for the vegetative state is going to be 8 hours up. And then once you get into the, the flower state, you're going to be 12 hours up. So that way it'll be off for 12 hours. So half of this is going to be on the timer which my light isn't plugged in right now because it is very, very bright. Actually, when I first got it, I was looking directly at it and couldn't, couldn't turn it on. Um, and eventually, it finally just came on when I wiggled the cord. I couldn't see fine for like a week. I was seeing I was seeing dots everywhere. Absolutely horrible. Would not recommend. I would definitely just trust that your light works and not stare directly at it to make sure. But that, that right there unplugged is the light. Um, and that, that side over there with the green light is going to be the time side. Anything over here with the, the red light is going to be just the always on side. So this is typically where you're going to have your fan, um, you're going to have your, your humidity controller, your temperature controller, you're going to have your heater, because your heater does have a thermostat, so it doesn't need to go on and off. Um, it's basically just going to be your light over there on the time side. Again, I, I'm very happy with the way that this performs, and this is another product that I would recommend to, to anybody out there looking for something like this. All right, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I will try to keep you guys updated with everything as much as possible. Um, the next step here is going to be to get my plants in here. Um, so I'll do a video on that as well. Um, another another guide for you guys to kind of follow uh, along on if you'd like. Um, once again, if you have any questions or anything like that, any any concerns, anything that I did wrong, anything I can do better, anything I, I did really good even, um, I would appreciate if you guys just left it down below. I would also really appreciate uh, me being a, a new YouTuber here. Um, any, any type of subscribers, anything like that, anybody subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, anything like that uh, would be very, very uh, appreciated by me. Um, thanks so much, you guys.